There are a lot of people with amazing photographic talent. There's a lot of people with amazing Photoshop talent as well. But when you combine those two things with somebody that's a visionary, you end up with my guest today. It's Anya Anti and Moon Thief on this episode of Behind the Shot. <laughs> Hi, and thanks again for joining me for another episode of Behind the Shot. I'm your host, Steve Brazel. On this podcast, I try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. And make sure that you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast so that you're always up to date. And of course, you can always find more information at the website thisweekinphoto.com. So today's guest is somebody that I met fairly recently, about a month ago at WPPI in Las Vegas. And when Renee Robin showed me her work, I knew I had to get her on the podcast. She has amazing photographic talent and amazing Photoshop talent. And when you combine that with her very unusual vision, you end up with serious art. So my guest today is Anya Auntie. Anya, how are you doing? Hi, Steve. I'm great. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to have you. Now, we met through Renee Robin at WPPI. Yes, yeah, she introduced us. We were standing in a bar having a drink and... I don't know if it was you or Renee showed me some of your work and I went, hello, got to have her on, on the podcast <laughs> because you have some amazing art. So I have a couple of questions for you before we get into your photo. Um, I know that you're self-taught or at least I've heard that you're self-taught. Is that true? Yes, that is 100% true. I've never attended any photography schools or workshops before. Well, I, I've been to a couple of workshops before, but when I was just starting and learning photography, it wasn't that popular, like giving workshop as it is now. I didn't have any friends photographers. There wasn't, there wasn't so much information online. It was like maybe six years ago. So it wasn't that popular. So you've like gotten to the now. level that you're at in six years? Um, yes, pretty much six or maybe seven years. Wow. That, that's amazing. And same with Photoshop, right? You're self taught in Photoshop and yes, photography. Yes. Yes. So, Obviously, people are going to recognize that you have an accent. You're from Ukraine originally. Yes, I'm from Ukraine. And where are you now? In New York right now. I moved into moved to New York two and a half years ago. And so welcome to the U.S. Thank you. Uh, nice to have you here. People of your such talent, it's wonderful to have here. And, and uh, New York is a perfect place for somebody that, that photographs and, and does the art that you do. You are internationally published. You are an international award winner. Uh, you're a bronze color ambassador and you've got, you know, credibility behind you. And I would just suggest that anybody go to Anya's website and I'll give the link at the end of the show. And it'll also be in the show notes on the website. Um, but go to her website and go look under press because it's amazing what this young woman has has done uh, with her art. One thing about your art before I bring this shot up, because this was shot with one of them. Uh, and you and I were talking about it off camera. One thing that fascinates me about you is you use vintage manual lenses, like the the old Soviet Helios lenses. For all your shots are done with these these classic manual lenses? Uh, well, yeah, that's right. Well, my, well, maybe not all of them, but like maybe 90% of my shots were made with uh, old Soviet manual lenses. Why, why do you choose that as opposed to a modern autofocus lens? Uh, well, I like I like the... The, the character of those lenses. I love the swirly bokeh. I love the character of the bokeh of those lenses. Um, I, I think that's pretty much it. I love, and and I you like have the, a collection of them, I understand. Well, not the huge collection, but you yeah, have like four or three maybe. Don't, don't remember exactly. Well, whatever it is you're doing with those lenses is amazing. I mean, Thank you. absolutely. I love your work. So let's get into your photograph here. Um, this photograph is called Moon Thief. And when I first saw this photograph, I knew that it was the perfect choice uh, to talk about on this show. And I, I've brought it up on screen. Um, the model's name, what's the name of the model for me again? Yana, Yana Bobrikova. And she's, she's from a, Ukraine as well. Yes. But she's not a model professionally. No, she's not. Like, she's not a model at all. She does some, like, um, amateur modeling for friends photographers but she's a photographer as well and also she makes props for well and her being a photographer may be the answer to one of my questions which her her look i don't know how you coached her to get her one her pose 
uh, but also her facial expression. And it must be because she just she's a photographer, so she kind of understood what you wanted inherently. But did you coach her to get? Uh, no, I didn't. I think that she's a photographer. This is this thing. So she understood what I wanted from her. Like I, I've explained it, my idea, and that was pretty much it. She just got it. So when you when you photographed this shot, did you have? I'm trying to think of how I want to ask this. Did you just take a photo of her in this scene uh, and then later decide for the moon portion? Or was this completely pre-visualized that she would be stealing the moon? It was completely pre-visualized. So I made this image for the Broom Collar Gen X uh, program as a part of my sponsorship. And I was browsing for, I was browsing their catalog for the equipment and I was thinking about what kind of things I would like to get from them. And then I saw this uh, balloon light shaper, which is uh, a light shaper for shooting the interior. So it's a it's a huge sphere, uh, plastic. You put the flash head inside of it and you get like this 360 uh, degrees like light. So uh, like instantly an idea came up to me that I can make a moon out of it. <laughs> so, um, Actually, I made a test shot before that one. I made a self-portrait. You can also find it on my website. I called it My Moon, when I, where I'm sitting and uh, like um, holding the moon like this. Oh, I saw that one on there when yeah. I was looking through your shots, yeah. Yeah, I made it only just for fun. And then I decided that I should go outside and do like an actual photo shoot with a model and a little bit of props or something like that. Um, so actually, I draw a sketch for that one. Uh, I you sometimes sketch I drew, this this shot right here, this one. Yes, sometimes I draw tiny sketches because I have an idea in my mind. It helps me like to visualize it more. Um, I bought this chain. There was a real chain. I bought it on eBay, and I had this idea that a girl or like a fairy or a queen or whatever, somebody uh, having this moon, maybe right next to her lying on the ground or she was hold it in her hands but then i thought that why is it there why is it lying on the ground or why is she holding it and then i had this idea of uh, this girl actually stealing the moon from the sky <laughs> and i thought like the moon must be heavy i think so she like, needs like rope or chains to carry or to to drag it on the ground and i developed all this idea see this is one of the things that i think people that are not at your level can really learn from and that is you know it's the old saying of don't just go take a photo right make yeah, a photo make it. Yes. and it, it and granted yours is by the way do you prefer to call yourself a digital artist a photographer a photo artist well i'm not a digital artist because i'm not actually drawing things so I prefer calling myself a photo artist. Okay, so for what you do, somebody who even just shoots portraits or you know environmental scenes or landscapes, pre-visualization to me is a huge key to success in photography. So I'm looking at this photograph. You thought about the chains for pulling the moon, which by the way, let's let's back up a little bit. What camera did you shoot this with, do you know? I shoot with Nikon D600. This is my only camera. But you put on the Helios lens. This was the Helios 4-2-N yes. yes. lens. This is, was Helios 42. So how does that attach to the lens? You have an adapter? Uh, well, no. This is like a new remanufactured lens. So it is modern, but it made from like an old, uh, like old Heli Helioses. So it has Nikon mount. I didn't use any adapters. And do you know, you gave it to me, but I'm just I'm curious if you remember. Do you do you remember what your exposure settings were on this? I think it was ISO 100, and my shutter speed was uh, one of a uh, hundred as well. Um, and your aperture, aperture, you told me your aperture on this was 1.5. Yeah, that's because uh, Helios 40 has uh, the most opened is 1.5. Wow. So, the, I mean, the widest aperture of Helios is 1.5. But, you know, and again, this could be me not doing what you do. I'm looking at this shot, she's totally in focus. Well, she's not really in focus. She, Helios has this little soaked focus effect, 
I mean, if you zoom in, you will see that, but it's pretty much sharp for the for the for the old manual lens. It's pretty sharp. Yes. See, and and for the atmosphere that you've got going on, it actually really works. That kind of soft look on her face, yes. the the beautiful light on her face. Where was this? Obviously, this is not her in front of a background, is it? I mean, she was in this location. No, of course not. It was a shot um, on the beach, not far from my old apartment in Brooklyn. And is there anything aside from the moon added in post? Um, I've added stars. And that, at, that atmospheric effect that you see. Yeah, yes. Like this swirly kind of effect. And I've added those little tiny pieces turned from the moon. Oh, the little lights in the chain. Yes. Yeah, I like that. There was supposed to be like tiny bits falling from the moon while she's dragging it. So she was shot on a beach. So yes. that's all the beach that, that we see in the scene. How'd you get that moon behind her? That that was that light you were talking about? And then you... you... Yes, this was an exa exact um, actual life shaper. This is an actual size of it. Everything is real except for the moon texture. And so you, in Photoshop or whatever you use, you overlaid a texture over that. Yes, yes. Brilliantly done. And one of the things... Well, before I get into this one, I want to ask you about the lighting on her. Uh, obviously, I'm guessing it's brawn color. Yes. And it's one light. Would you know which light it was? Yes, I remember. I used the moon ki uh, move kit, which is like a um, uh, mobile uh, battery block with two flash heads. One was inside of the balloon light shaper, and the other one you can see was uh, from the side of her. Something just hit me. The the light shaper that was the moon, that was in the scene when you originally shot it. You didn't yes. add that light in post. No, no, no. The light is completely like real. Interesting. See, and I I was thinking that maybe the whole moon was added in post. No, so, only so the texture. Yeah, see, and that's a brilliant way to do it because most people, this I think is where a lot of of you know digital people would have fallen down is they would have had the idea, they would have put, and I'm guessing the brawn color lighting her was camera left? Uh, yes, that's right. And uh, I don't suppose you know what, how far away or power or anything like that? Um, no, I don't remember that. Uh, I remember that it was, was super windy that way, that day. Um, so I couldn't use any like reflector or softbox or umbrella because it was just blowing away everything. So I had to use the flash head like it is without any like soft boxes or reflectors or whatever. So the light came out pretty sharp and I had to edit the shadows after in Photoshop a little bit. So they weren't that harsh, you know. So this is a bare bulb to her left. And what I was going to say was most people would have kind of positioned the, the chain and had it hang there and then completely added, you know, a moon photo separately. You actually thought well enough to put that light shaper on the ground, wrap the moon around it, I mean the chain around it, um, and then lay the texture over, cutting that texture out over the chain, by the way. Uh, I used, I don't remember which one, I think overlay mode, so it worked like itself. I didn't cut out anything. Okay, she didn't have to cut anything out. How did yes. you smooth the, the shadows out? Um, I think I used frequency separation method okay which would make that that would make sense yes. um and and by the way for anybody that's watching if you don't know frequency separation you'll see a lot of articles that it's really used in fashion photography but trust me it's not only for fashion photography yes um, may, i mean i use it all the time oh i know wedding photographers who live and breathe on it because they can keep the texture in a wedding dress yeah it's, it's a really quick way to edit things like shadows yeah, and basically the concept of it is, and and you use it more than I do, so so uh, I'm a concert shooter. <laughs> I rarely <laughs> use it. I've played with it. Um, but the concept is that you're separating out the color layer of an image from, from the, texture the texture layer yeah, so that you right. can either fix texture problems like blemishes without changing people's color or vice versa. You can fix blemishes of color without or, changing. Or the light shape. Yeah, or, or light shaping without changing their pores, for example. Yes. Uh, love, love frequency separation. So a couple of other other things um, as far as the atmosphere, the, the atmosphere, you did the same thing. You put it in with a, a blend mode. Uh, you mean the stars? Yeah, the stars. Um, yeah, I think it was light mode or something. OK, all right. 
Um, and I, I, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this image really quick and just, it, it's so beautiful. I just absolutely love this shot. Thank you. Absolutely amazing what you've done with this shot. So when you shot the model, you shot her on a beach. Was it at nighttime or did you do an exposure to, to cheat daytime? Uh, no, it wasn't daytime. It was right after the sunset. Okay. And what post did you do on the image as a whole? I mean, do you use Lightroom or everything's in Photoshop? I use both Lightroom and Photoshop. I do uh, color in Lightroom. And then I do all the compositing and retouching thing in Photoshop. And what did you do on this image for her as far as, you know, vibrance and clarity? and? Um, I do a bunch of stuff. Um, I do a lot of color correcting, like HSL and split toning and curves and uh, sometimes camera calibration. So I didn't change any lightning, like maybe some contrast, but mainly it was the color. And uh, in a lot of your shots... Um, you you do this kind of mood that you're obviously doing in post, like you say, you you mess with the colors in post. Um, when you when you visualize a shot, uh, is that part of that part, or is this you know Anya having fun in Photoshop and she pulls it up and goes, hmm, what about blue? I mean, what what is your thought process as you're doing these these um, uh, they're really fantasy fairy tale images. Uh, well, it depends on an image. Sometimes I have, like you said, like a pre-visualized before and I have the idea what colors do I want. Sometimes I just play around, but I've already have my like own style maybe. So I know how I'd like the image to look, but sometimes it takes a while when I don't know how I want to image to, to look like. So it depends. It really depends on the photo shoot. You, you have an amazing body of work. Um, and anybody watching again, I've, I have to stress, you really need to go to her website and your website, go ahead and give out your, your website info really quick. It's Anya, uh, auntie.com with a hyphen between. Okay. So Anya hyphen or dash yes. auntie.com, A N T I.com. Yes. Yes. And, uh, go look, just land on her homepage and browse because seriously, if nothing else, you will be inspired to stretch your own photographic skills to try and reach the, the level that, that she's gotten to. Um, you can also follow Anya on social media. You want to give out some of your social media links? Yeah, or, I've, I've got, got them if you need them too. Yeah, I've got Facebook. It's Anya Anti Art. I've got two Instagram accounts. One is my main and personal, which is Anya underscore Anti. And the other one is my portfolio only is Anya Ardisco Anti underscore art. Okay. And then you're also on YouTube at Anya Anti. Uh, I think it's Anita Anti. Oh, Anita Anti. Yes. And then uh, one got, you didn't. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, I've got uh, some like uh, 500 pixels and something else. You can find it on my website. I've, I've got all the links over there. Well, and that's what I was going to say was one that, that you had not emailed to me, but I found on your website was your 500 PX. Um, which is uh, Anita Anti there as well, uh, A N I T A A N T I. But yes. here's the thing: you go to thisweekinphoto.com, find the blog post for this episode. You'll get all the links that you need, and I've got a small gallery up there uh, of her work as well. And you'll find out some information on her and her background and, and etc. But Anya, I really appreciate your being on the show with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was fun. I'm very flattered. <laughs> well, next time you're back on the uh, the West Coast instead of the East Coast. Uh, let's get together and, and talk shop. And if not, sure. I will hopefully see you at another WPPI. If you see Renee Robin before me, tell her I said hello. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you again very much. That does it for this episode of Behind the Shot, a show where we try and get inside the mind of great photographers by taking a closer look behind one of their shots. Because let's be honest, in the end, all that really matters is the shot. I'm your host, Steve Brazel. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.